All right. Is there a stipulation reached? Yes, Your Honor, between counsel. Yes, Your Honor. Would you state, briefly state the stipulation? Yes, Your Honor. The stipulation is that there are certain exhibits lodged with the court in connection with the grand jury proceedings, and there's a stipulation that those exhibits can be released to us, to the people, and that, for mutual use by both sides. So stipulated, Your Honor. I'll approve that stipulation and release the exhibits. Thank you, Your Honor. Leslie, is the unit on here? Is this on? You need to. No, I just asked if the. It takes about 10 seconds to heat up. You may call your first witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Call Martin Bashir. Mr. Bashir, come forward, please. Come forward to the witness stand. And when you get to the witness stand, remain standing. Face the clerk here. Raise your right hand. I do. Please be seated. State and spell your name for the record. My name is Martin Bashir. M-A-R-T-I-N. Surname, B-A-S, as in, sugar, H-I-R. Mr. Bashir, I'm going to ask you if you'd scoot a little closer to that microphone, if you can. I'm not particularly tall. I'm sorry. That's all right. Mr. Bashir, what is your profession or occupation? I'm a television journalist. And how long have you been involved in that occupation? I've been involved in journalism for 20 years, and I've been a television journalist for around 18 years. Could you just... Somehow you need to get closer to that mic. Can you swing it towards you a little bit? It's bolted down. It moves this way. I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry. You'll have to move to it. It doesn't. I'm sorry. I've been working as a journalist for 20 years, and I've been working as a television journalist for around 18 years. Tell us a little bit, to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, if you would, a little bit about what a television journalist does. A television journalist is somebody who performs the task of journalism, which is, in effect, to report, to research, to investigate, to report stories. The distinction would be that a television journalist, as opposed to a newspaper journalist, would use the medium of television so that, when I started my career, I would write for newspapers, do stories for newspapers, did some sports reporting, some general news. And then when I moved on to television, it was the same core task of reporting, but it was done using the medium of television. And then how does the profession, how does the way that you practice that profession differ, if it does in any respect? from those that we see on the nightly network news stations reporting the news as a journalist. There would be no distinction as to what I'm doing. I'm covering stories and reporting. I suppose the distinction would be that news journalists would tend to file shorter reports. My career has tended to be fixed around long-form films. I mean by that documentaries, half-hour, one-hour, and in some cases two-hour films, current affairs programs. So I would tend to be described in the United Kingdom as a current affairs specialist, somebody who does long-form film as opposed to nightly news. Now, in the practice of your profession, where is it that you've worked professionally? As a television journalist. Yes, sir. I began at the BBC with what we call regional broadcasting. That would be like a local affiliate to you. Now, what is the BBC? The BBC is the British Broadcasting Corporation. It is a state-funded broadcasting organization which does everything from drama, comedy, to news and current affairs, light entertainment, music, and I joined a local regional station in London covering news that was breaking in London. I did that for three years. Then after that, I was promoted to a network position on a current affairs program called Public Eye. And there I did a variety of domestic stories, everything ranging from car crime, to stories about violent attacks and racist attacks on immigrant groups in London. After that, I did that for about three years, and then after that I moved on to a program called Panorama, and that was in 1992. Panorama is the BBC's flagship current affairs program. And whilst on that program, I did a number of important stories, and the first film I did for Panorama was actually a film about allegations of satanic abuse. I did a film which investigated whether there was such a thing. There was so-called satanic covens. Objection. Narrative. Sustained. In the year of 2002, 
Excuse me just a second. Brief interruption. All right, Mr. Bashir, let's jump forward in your career to the year 2002, if we could. Sure. Where were you employed professionally in the year 2002? I was employed by the United Kingdom's biggest commercial television network ITV. And what does ITV stand for? Independent television. And in connection with your professional responsibilities there, did you do video documentaries? What do you mean by video documentaries? All right. Then obviously you didn't, if you don't know what it's called. When you do programs, what do you call them? I call them films. Films. Yeah. Current affairs films. Current affairs films, so we can talk about the same thing. Now, could you give me just two or three or maybe four, just by name, of individuals that you've done current affairs films for over the years? Sure. I did a one-hour special on a notorious serial killer called Harold Shipman, who is alleged to have murdered 273 people and was found guilty in court and in fact committed suicide quite recently. I did an hour on that. I did a special hour on an extraordinary story featuring a Maltese couple who came to the United Kingdom, and the mother was. Objection. Relevance. The qualifications is overruled. Did you do a current affairs piece on Princess Diana? I did, yeah. That was not in 2002. That was in 1995. All right, so you did do that? I did. And how long was that production? I think the total duration was around an hour and 50 minutes, an hour and 45 minutes. All right. Now, in connection with your current affairs occupation or business during the year 2000, did you do a current affairs film on the defendant in this case, Michael Jackson? I did. And could you tell me when it was that you commenced that, in what year? 2002. And when did you finish it? The broadcast date was the 3rd of February, 2003. When did you actually complete the project, the filming of it? The filming of it, I think the last day of filming was the 14th of January, 2003, in Miami. Now, during the time, and you have, let me ask you this. Did you review the actual film that was used in connection with the broadcast you just mentioned in Great Britain? I'm sorry, what do you mean, did I, review, it? The one that was shown on the television. Excuse me. Let me just go back for a second if we can. What was the name of the program in which the current affairs film on the defendant in this case, Mr. Jackson, was shown in the United Kingdom? It was titled, Living with Michael Jackson. And what program was it connected with? Some individual program, or just? It was made by a team. The current affairs team that supplied the weekly output for ITV was called, Tonight. The show was called, Tonight. That's what I was after, what the show was called. Forgive me, I'm sorry. The program itself, because it was longer than a normal Tonight show, was actually broadcast on a different night in the evening for a longer duration, so it was given its own specific title for that reason. All right, Your Honor, at this time I have two exhibits I'd like to have marked as People's 1 and People's 2 for identification purposes. Actually, if you would excuse me, I will make my way over to the clerk. Off the record discussion held at council table. Your Honor, the exhibits that I've just had the clerk mark for identification purposes. People's one is a custodian of the records declaration from a Philip Lunt, L-U-N-T, from Granada Productions as the declarant, as the custodian. And the second exhibit is the, I'm opening the package and removing from it the film. That's been marked as People's Exhibit Number 2 which according to the authentication, is a copy of the program that was shown in Great Britain on February the 3rd. So I'd like to have both of these moved into evidence as People's 1 and 2, and I intend to then show the video to the jury. All right, they're admitted. Mr. Bashir, one last question before we actually show the video. During the time that you were in production of the video, Living with Michael Jackson, were you aware of the fact that Mr. Jackson also had one of his videographers accompanying you during the filming of your footage? Objection. Your Honor, I should probably introduce myself. I'm Mr. Bashir's counsel, Theodore J. Boutrous Jr., and I'm joined here today by Henry Hoberman, who is a senior vice president and the head of litigation for ABC News, and pursuant to the court's prior order, 
I'm going to object to this question on the grounds that it calls for unpublished information that's protected by the California Constitution's Journalist Shield Law which is meant to protect the independence of journalists from being called to testify. And I'd like to renew our objection to Mr. Bashir being called today and also would rely on the First Amendment, First Amendment privilege for journalists. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Boutrous, the objection you raise, it's not a privilege. It's a shield from contempt. So from the standpoint of sustaining your objection, I won't sustain the objection. The question's been asked. Are you going to answer the question? Your Honor, the First Amendment privilege is a privilege, so I would request that the court enforce that privilege. This is unpublished information gathered in the news gathering process, and it's important for journalists to have that freedom to gather news and report it without intrusion of the courts. And I would ask the court to enforce the First Amendment privilege. We have great respect for the court and don't want to go into contempt, but we would ask the court to preclude that type of questioning. And based on some of the arguments, I'm concerned that this will become a side issue, and it could really do harm to the ability of journalists to gather information that's of important public interest and concern and disseminate it to the public. So I'd ask the court to at this point limit the questioning to published information and background information about Mr. Bashir on both sides, because I'm concerned about where the the rights are different on both sides. They are, Your Honor, and in fact it's an absolute privilege with respect to, yes, it's an absolute privilege with respect to the district attorney, and on that ground, I would ask the court to enforce it absolutely and preclude this question, and Mr. Jackson's lawyers have not made any showing thus far that they have any ability. True. We're not at that issue. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. The question, though, has been asked. The objection is overruled. And I'm asking the witness if he's going to answer the question. Would you like it read back to you? I would, yes. Thank you. Record read. The answer to the question is yes, but the individual concerned. Objection. Only filmed on two occasions. Wait. You answered the question, and there's an objection. The question is answered. Okay. And the answer was, yes. Okay. Your Honor, I understand you have a button that has to be activated before we can show the VCR. That's true. And my second question is, Your Honor, we do have a transcript of this if, in the court's discretion, you would like to have the jurors have them at this time. If not, that's fine. Because I'm not sure at this point that the transcripts are transcripts of this, and you couldn't make that representation to me. I'm not going to allow the transcript to be passed around. That's perfectly understandable, Your Honor. All right. Now, I think I pushed the right button. Could I make a request? Would it be possible for Mr. Bashir to come down so he can watch the broadcast rather than... I can vacate my seat if that would. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But I didn't want to have him come down yet until we're sure that... I think we're at that point. No problem. If I may lodge an objection, Your Honor, no transcripts. The rules of court require them before you show a tape. Audio tape. They require them on videotape. I believe so, Your Honor. They also require that the jury have the transcript. I don't think that's the case. I thought that what it required was that the record on appeal requires a transcript, not that it's required at the time. You have to lodge the tape with the court which I didn't prevent him from doing. He wanted to hand the jurors copies, and you weren't in chambers, but it was represented in chambers that he hasn't had the opportunity to compare his transcript to this tape. So I'm not, you know, I'm not having that. I wouldn't want to hand it to the jury at this point. Because it just got here. Yeah, this tape just got to my office last Friday. Yes, sir, at the court. Could I request, Your Honor, that we get a copy of their transcript? Certainly. Thank you. Now, I'm going to let Mr. Bashir sit down, if you're sure you don't have any other questions to ask him. I better quit while I'm ahead, Your Honor. I guess we'll have Mr. Bashir come down here, I'll give him my chair, and he can watch. I can't see. Is there any room? There's someone nodding affirmatively. He can sit next to that individual. Mr. Bashir, you may step down now. Thank you. Just to be clear, too, 
This is Mr. Hoberman, who I identified in passing. Good morning, Your Honor. The individual shaking his head was co-counsel. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Whenever you're ready, I have a button here that also allows me to have the screen go blank. And if counsel is concerned, any of the attorneys is concerned, huh? I thought you were still talking. If you're concerned, tell me and just say, blanket, and I'll do that. All right. That would only be because it shows something I don't anticipate. Whereupon, a portion of a videotape, People's Exhibit No. 2, was played for the court and jury. You know, would you hold it a second? There's one admonition that I want to make to the jury before we watch this, and I'm going to give you a more detailed instruction on this later, but I just want to prepare you for this right now. That the video of, Living with Michael Jackson, which is this video, at this point is not offered for the truth of anything said or shown in the program with the exception of certain passages that will later be identified. You will receive additional instruction with regard to these identified passages. The rest of the contents of the video is hearsay and not, and cannot be considered by you to prove anything other than the fact that the program aired in February of 2003. You may now go forward. Your Honor, we're ready. Yes. Whereupon, a portion of a videotape, People's Exhibit No. 2, was played for the court and jury. There's about a 30-second break, Your Honor. Or 45 seconds. Thank you. We're missing the commercials. Your Honor, I can try and fast forward through this if you'd like. Whatever you'd like. Whereupon, a portion of a videotape, People's Exhibit No. 2, was played for the court and jury. Well, it's almost time for the 11.30 break, so let's take the 11.30 break. 